So we all know this feeling when we are asked out of the blue to prepare a new piece within a week. Uh, that could be very terrifying. And so today I'm going to give you a step-by-step -step simple plan that anyone can follow. And that plan will let you make it. And not just make it in a way like surviving, but uh, make it easily, effortlessly, uh, with no damage to your nerves, with no damage to your hands, playing confidently, playing comfortably. After all, that's all what we want. <laughs> um, so um, I'm going to give you a, a minimum uh, like set of principles that uh, will help you to make a new piece within a short time. These are fingering, hands movements, intonation, weight, um, musical image, time and artistry. And yes, as I said, uh, that will only let you play comfortably. That means that there is no nuances of dynamics, harmony, phrasing. So you would probably want to use this system of practicing uh, when you need to accompany someone, when you're playing uh, uh, chamber music or playing with a vocalist or repairing a not so serious and so important uh, performance. Uh, I mean, in conservatory I had hours of such playing and really this way of system really works for me. Um, it helped me a lot at the time. Anyway, the point is you don't want to use this way of practicing if you prepare for piano competition or piano examination, that's obvious. But usually we kind of have much more time than a week to prepare for those kind of um, occasions. <laughs> So, um, last thing to say, um, while practicing, you would always want to have three stages, analyzing, learning, and rehearsing stage. That means <laughs> not just analyzing and not learning, not just learning without analyzing, not analyzing, learning without rehearsing, all three stages. And you would probably want to kind of break your practicing time into three parts, maybe three days for uh, analysis, three days for learning, couple of days for rehearsing a piece. So that's about it. Now let's get started. All right, so the first stage. On the first analysis stage, it's important to remember that you need to play everything only in slow tempo, so just keep that in mind. So you would want to start with writing down the fingering in the score, just take the pencil, write it down. Don't underestimate the importance of writing down fingering. If you take a look actually at my score, you will see that almost every note is marked with a number. <laughs> so that will eliminate any even little confusion while playing, and as we all know, any confusion always brings tension. So also it will help you to quickly learn the piece because playing with the same pattern of fingering will improve your muscle memory, okay, that's obvious. Next, uh, go to hands movements. Again, uh, correct hand motions will eliminate any unhealthy tension while playing and will let you feel comfortable while playing. And um, will let you memorize piece easier as you always practice with the same movement pattern. So while playing with separate hands and then both hands, just watch the wrist and elbow movements. Now about uh, wrist movement, move wrist gently with um, loose hands. <laughs> I mean, you know all of this. To the direction of the notes. So, so if C is lower than F, then C to the left. If A is higher than G, then move to the right. Um, now, if you're not sure about where to move the elbow in position changes, you know, you're not a master in finding position changes, it's okay. And at least apply its movement in large leaps. So, I don't know. Ah. Okay, so here you go, for example, over the octave down. So you would want to play wrist, elbow, move. And always keep in mind, try to move your elbow very quickly, even if you play in slow tempo. But again, with no any unhealthy tension. So what you need to do is basically play a couple of times with separate hands, then with both hands. 
And don't repeat the piece like hundreds of times so far. It's enough to go through the piece maybe once, maximum twice to remember new sensations. Later on the stage of learning, you will start practicing using an efficient way of repeating the piece, but not now. Yes, my cat agrees. All right, so let me just show you how it looks like. So just play once or twice right hand this way. Waiting. But I promise you, I always write down fingering. Uh, let's see what we can do. Three, for example. Okay, then you go both hands. Huh? include next step in the first day. So, add intonation to your playing that will ease sensations in your muscles, letting you play everything more effortless. If you are new to this idea, start uh, for some minutes with this simple exercise. Sing every interval up and down with movement, glissando, and resistance. So, for example, you would do... Now, if you have some problems, because some of my students have that, uh, you cannot hit really clear the second note. You like, don't really know where you go. You sing like... Ah. <laughs> so what you can do is, it happens that you know your vocal cords are not really tuned on the note. Even if you hear the pitch clear in your mind, still your vocal cords uh, haven't got used to this sensation. So what you could do is sing out loud the destination now several times. <laughs> And then you sing. In this case, 100%, I guarantee you, you always hit the pitch, no matter what is your musical background. Okay. Um, when this sensation of glissando and resistance in between notes becomes more solid, go ahead, go ahead and try to sing internally while playing. Uh, so, that's basically how you would add intonation. Um, and you can play, you know, both hands right away. So, you know, you would just uh, play and internally sing in between notes. And of course, again, you don't want to play faster. Again, in this particular example, you I don't know, <laughs> I would probably want to play it non legato. So uh, when I'm going to sing, I'm not going to sing with legato. I'm going to speed up second part of the distance slightly, just a little bit. So not just but so that would give me non legato. Now when I play my right hand, I'm going to intonate the same way, but I'm going to uh, still keep my fingers on the key. So not like I'm also playing staccato. I'm not playing staccato. I'm kind of connecting those. But if I intonate this way, then as you can see, the sound becomes kind of more crispy. Comparably with the gata. So that's how you do it. Um, all right, so let me just show you how you would play it. One more time, you wouldn't want to play hundreds of times, just play a couple of times till you just get the sensation. So in left hand, I'm going to intonate the same way, but in left hand, I'm going to let go my fingers. So that would be the difference between staccato and omnigato in my right hand. <laughs> Uh, 
Okay, then in the same day, you want to add arm weight. It's a sense of free body energy uh, that you express through your intonation. Weight is absolutely necessary for sustaining freedom in hands while playing, improving tone quality and bringing power to your technique. I think everyone knows that by now. <laughs> I will include the link about arm weight in the description below, but generally what you need to do is to feel the energy in your body, direct it to the keyboard while playing, and express the sensation through intonation. So singing without weight sounds this way. Uh, again, I will sing with non legata. So without weight it will sound this way, right? With weight. So again, uh, there are some questions sometimes arise, like uh, do you still use weight while making staccato non legata? As you can see, you can still do it. Okay, so again, uh, just play the piece once with both hands. Um, and honestly, I'm actually not separating intonation weight, I do it right away, but if you are newborn, then I, you just, I suggest you to separate first intonation, then weight. So with weight, it will sound this way. speech in the second day okay uh, so again if you're new to this principle come back for some minutes to intonation exercises and add feeling of character of music to your singing so let's say you would sing this interval with nothing so it would sing this it will sound this way ah. now add feeling of F major so F major is Sometimes not clear about the image of music, they just go through harmonies of the piece. It will be very easy for you to catch the feeling. So, well, for me it's light, but also it may just bring some kind of comfort and softness. I don't know, that's how I feel it. So, um, let's see again without image, oh, with image. You see how my voice changes, how my sound and my vocal cords feel different. So that will affect playing as well. I'm really apologize about this sun that comes and goes <laughs> as it wants. <laughs> it ruins completely my light, but okay. Um, so if you, as soon as you got this feeling, all you need to do is simply playing again once or twice with both hands, the piece, expressing musical image through intonation. So that's how it looks like. And again, you want to play slow. It's obvious because you want to feel the image in between notes through your intonation. to your playing, to choose the right tempo before playing the piece and keep pulsation throughout the piece. Always merge feeling of pulsation with musical image 
feel it, describe it, and start playing. Again, it's enough to just go through the whole piece a couple of times in slow tempo. So that's how it looks like. Um, you tune, you merge yourself with a beautiful um, feeling of character of music. And now you kind of give a heartbeat to that image. So we're gonna pulsate by dotted croce. So four beats in the bar are gonna be in our pulsation. And um, just imagine that what we're talking about, we're talking about something light and positive and um, beautiful, okay? <laughs> Trust me, in my mind, it's much more rich. It's just my English vocabulary is not that good. So uh, now give this character pulsation. So we talk about slow tempo. So we're gonna go this way. So feel how this pulsation affects actually the character of music. So it gives this kind of very uh, chill, lounge, very relaxed, very calm uh, atmosphere. And keeping this pulsation, you just start playing. again a link uh, with a detailed explanation about this principle in the description below but in a couple of words you will simply express everything you feel through confident and open energy again this feeling just like a musical image is expressed in between notes through intonation so remember how we say this ah, and then with image ah. so with the same feeling now just add a confident expression do it through artistry. So if I sing just image, sound this way, if I sing expressing through artistry, everything uh, looks more dramatic, bigger, like under magnifying glass. Uh, that's basically what it is. So. Um, Again, play the piece with both hands a couple of times uh, with artistry and next day start learning stage. So that's how basically goes. I go into character of music, I remember the time, the heartbeat of this image, and now I express everything through artistry. <laughs> I'm sure you all also know this by now. Okay, so after these three days left for your analyzing, go to day number four and start deliberately practicing the piece by blocks, meaning start repeating the piece being smart. Uh, so you want to start with playing the piece um, more or less four bars. In this particular piece, I will probably go with two bars because the bar is quite long. So it basically depends on the size of the bar, I guess. So usually I go by four bars I start. Or maybe sometimes even by eight bars, but here are just two. What you need to do is repeat them in slow tempo several times, just like five times. In moderate tempo, five times. In fast tempo, five times. Remember to feel image and time over again every time you're upgrading your tempo. So don't just play faster by moving your fingers fast as we used to. Stop it for a second, feel it in a new uh, heartbeat and then start playing. So 
Uh, I'll show you. So this is day four. You play basically by two bars. Day five, you're going to unite the two bar bars to four bars. So you're going to practice the same way with four bars at a time. Uh, next day, you're going to practice the same way with eight bars at a time. So basically, when you reach the whole piece this way, that's your goal. Um, let me just show you how it looks like. So I'm taking the first two bars. Okay, I start with slow tempo. Okay. Okay. <laughs> I just stop right here. Next one, I am playing uh, the same two bars faster. So, um, so that gives me a sensation of more line and um, like uh, aspiring more lively tempo. And I go with this. Faster. Not sure exactly how fast it is actually. Okay, mm, let's say. <laughs> So I'm start by by four bars. So start starting again slowly. And I stop the here. Then I go faster, then I go faster. Then I go with next four bars. Next day I'm going with eight bars. Next day I'm going with sixteen bars. So that's how you do it. And altogether, it might take three to ten days to learn this piece uh, this way, depending on the size uh, and level of difficulties in the piece. Um, but now, an important note about memorization. I never try to memorize the piece on purpose, just because after repeating the piece uh, so well <laughs> and so many times during the learning stage, the piece will be basically in hand muscles naturally. So this way of practicing works perfectly for memorization. So next, uh, the last couple of days, day seven, day eight, you want to spend to rehearse your piece. So if there are several pieces in the program, always play them in a row when rehearsed, just like you would play at your performance. So don't just play one piece and then you stop and then go and drink some tea and come back. Play all together. Try to play your program in front of people, family, friends, students, teachers, even playing in front of the camera, <laughs> recording yourself will work as much stressful as playing in front of people. Trust me. <laughs> so um, you can use your iPhone com camera or any device that can record. Basically, I'm having my real camera, camcorder, but I know people using iPhone, iPads, all kinds of devices. Um, so just remember that you must keep at least two days per all your performance for rehearsing stage in order to train your artistry energy muscles to hold your ground and keep your boundaries and space in front of people. So 
Here we have eight perfectly ordered days to prepare a new piece. And if that sounds like something you would want to try, <laughs> go ahead. And if you have any questions, you can always write me and I'll be happy to guide you through this. Um, that's about it. And see you in the next video. Bye bye.